Okay, so huge news. In the Overwatch developer PvP stream, they announced that Overwatch 2 will be going 5v5. Now, already on the internet, this is causing reactions ranging from optimistic to doomsday disastrous. And you're going to hear a lot more about this in the coming days and weeks and months. But I think this change could, not will, could be amazing for the game. So let me take a minute to explain why. I want to spell out a few big picture benefits first and then I want to go through some of the arguments that people have had against 5v5 and really get into why I think there's a lot of unnecessary negativity around something that could bring a lot of benefits to the game. Some of the biggest potential pluses for this change, lower queue times, tanks become more potentially fun, teams become less dependent on their tanks, so that should mean more tank playstyles, different tank metas, the game becomes visually less cluttered, so that means the game becomes more accessible, more simple, easier to understand to the new players. And it'll also make it way easier to balance. Now I'm going to get into each of those points as we go. So let's start with smaller queue times because this one is really straightforward. Right now, basically all your queues are decided by how many tank players are playing. If you're waiting in queue, you're basically waiting for the four tanks in your lobby to be ready. So have the number of tanks needed. You have the queue times. Very simple. With 5v5, imagine potentially getting double the games you normally play in one night. And I know even in Plat and Diamond, DPS queues can go like 7-8 minutes sometimes. So having half of that is just a huge benefit to the playing experience of the game. Now, the counter argument I've already seen to this is, well, it'll alienate a lot of tank players. <laughs> Sorry, who? Who are these tank players that you speak of? The, the tank players that don't exist? The tank players that are causing these long queue times because they're just not there? The big picture, guys, is that there just isn't all these tank players to piss off. And I say this as a tank player myself. Look, let, let me just be real for a second. I've argued for the longest time that Blizzard should fix the tank role and should make it more fun and make it such a way that more people want to play the role. But the reality is, nobody likes playing tank the way it is right now. If you're watching this and you do like playing tank and you're thinking, oh, well, this is going to take away the playstyle of love. Well, I sympathize, but you got to realize that we're in such a minority. In pretty much every game out there, nobody likes playing tank. There's always a shortage of tanks in games because at the end of the day, everybody wants to be the pop-off character, or if not that, they'd rather be the support who's kind of doing their work quietly behind, without all the attention and noise. Nobody wants to be the guy in the front line getting pounded, getting hit with everything, taking a bunch of damage for other people to succeed. Now this is more true Overwatch than it is in pretty much any other game, so there's no balance change that's going to change that. We're in the best balance state we've ever been in by most people's agreement and we still don't have any tank players. So what changes that we can make that's suddenly going to fix that? This is just the reality I've come to guys. There is no balance change. We have to change the way we view tank fundamentally and the way the role is played fundamentally. We wanted tanks to be more fun for so long. Well, this is what Blizzard is doing. They want them to be a little bit more DPS-y, a little bit more self-reliant. People that don't have to have all the damage and heals pumped into them, they can just kind of do their own thing. Okay, you might not like that playstyle personally, but it will widen the scope of tank so much. It will make so many more people want to play the role and it will expand what the players in the role can do. And even if, even if we remain exactly where we are numbers wise, even if we lose some tank players and we gain some tank players and we end up where we were, we'll still have the queue times. So that's just a big plus, no two ways about it. And this kind of leads me to my second point, which is that with 5v5, you can all pop off more. Again, it's, it's pretty straightforward. If you're one-fifth of the team instead of one-sixth of the team, you're going to have more of an impact with everything you do. Everyone always complains about their Pepega teammates. Well, now you can do more to win every game you play. You can climb more consistently. You can have impact more consistently. And I know the counter argument is going to be like, well, SVB aren't throwers going to impact my game more now too? No, I don't, I don't think that's necessarily the case. The, the thing with Overwatch right now is it's such a heavily team-dependent game. That sometimes if you just don't all do the right thing together, if you don't all go the right path together, if you don't all use the right cooldowns and the right combination, and the other team does, you just lose. You just get team diffed or you get tank diffed. This is basically trying to change all that. It's trying to open the game up by making it more individualistic. Not completely solo, because I know the counter argument that people who come with, they're going to say, well, why don't you just go play CSGO? Why don't you just turn it into Valorant then? Again, it's not binary, guys. It's a scale. On the one end, you have the completely solo carry games. And on the one hand, you have all the teamwork games. Right now, we're watching the teamwork side of things and really deep in there. And yes, while we might enjoy that teamwork aspect, and I love that teamwork aspect, it's also what makes the game horrible to play. Most of the time, it goes wrong and it goes wrong pretty often. So we're not saying go all the way this way. We're not saying go all the way to solo. But let's bring it back into the middle a little bit so that you still have teamwork elements. But also as an individual, you can do more and feel more powerful. That, that seems pretty reasonable to me. 
I think we really have to avoid looking at it from a best case scenario or worst case scenario. I think we really want to try and get into what's the most likely outcome, like what will most games look like? And this is the problem I see with a lot of criticism, where people take it to the nth degree and they say, oh well, what about tank synergies? We're going to lose tank synergies. And for the majority of the player base, I think, <laughs> what tank synergy? What tank synergy are you getting in gold and plat? I, I really think people are trying to have their cake and eat it too. Every day on my stream, every day in my YouTube comments, I get people asking me, oh, I see BM playing tank and my off tank locks Roadhog. Like, what do I do? My off tank is an inter. He doesn't bubble me at the right time or, or my main tank doesn't know what he's doing. He's just a Ryan and he charges deep into the back line. But all of a sudden you try and fix that and people are like, no, the off tank synergy will lose the off tank synergy. Okay, I understand at the best, at the absolute best Overwatch, yes, tank synergies feel amazing. It feels amazing to get the Zarya bubble at the right time, to have that ride and swing at the right time, the Winston dive in, the Divas right there with him DMing. Of course, at its ideal, it feels great. But ask yourself, how many times do you get that ideal version? And if you're honest, you're probably going to say, not a lot. The majority of your games, this tank synergy never comes into play. It's, it's all like unrealized potential. And five years into the game, if we haven't realized it now, we're never going to realize it, guys. It's the same argument that got brought up when we went from open queue to roll queue. And I myself was skeptical because like a lot of other people, I was worried that, oh, well, is it dumbing down the game? Like, are we losing a lot of the beautiful things about open queue when you get that right comp, when you flex yourself onto a different hero? You know, instead of being able to master 30 heroes, I can only master one roll now. Like, I'm losing out on so much. But the reality is... 222 sanitize so much of the game it fixed so much of the pain that we experience when we're going into rank and you queue up and you get five dps insta lock it's the same thing here like yes in the ideal version we lose the tank synergies most of the time they just don't exist for the majority of the player base so we're not losing anything in fact we're gaining something by being liberated from a world where tanks are mandatory and having the right combination of tank abilities used in a certain sequence is like crucial to winning or losing a game now that we don't have that your games will feel much more sane, they'll feel much more manageable. And at the highest level, of course, which is also important, the actual opposite is true. Tank synergies tend to break the game at the highest level. For the majority of Overwatch's life, tanks have just been a dominant force and they've often dictated what metas are. You take from everything from GOATs and the quad tanks before Rolock to double shield afterwards. A lot of the really obnoxious metas have come specifically because of tank synergies. We're looking at what we lose when we take away, but we're also forgetting all the problems they bring. Orisa was and is fine on her own, but you bring Sigma alongside her and suddenly you create this nightmarish, horrible, boring problem. Similarly, if you're in a game and you're running double bubble and you jump in as Winston and your Zarya doesn't bubble you the right time or God forbid she's playing Roadhog, well, the game just falls apart, you lose GG and everybody's typing tank diff in chat. The problem is that so many metas are built around tank synergies that if you don't get them, the game falls apart. Because when stuff gets stacked on top of each other, it becomes really, really oppressive. Again, double shield is a great example, but even double bubble, right? The fact that you stack them on top of each other makes them exponentially better. In that world, heroes aren't being played at the strength of themselves as an individual hero. They're being played for their strength in this synergy. And again, this goes back to the whole teamwork versus individual thing. Now that these problematic tank synergies won't be a mandatory part of the game, it actually opens up a lot more what you can do and what you can run because you're running the tanks off the strength of what they do, not what they do in combination with another hero. And remember that as a consequence, balancing gets way easier because right now when they balance tanks, they have to balance them with the mind of, well, what about the 50 tank combinations that they could all come up with where this person's paired with this person or this hero's paired with this hero. And remember that they're only going to add more heroes. So this problem will only ever get increasingly complex. Like we're crying for more heroes and we're going to get more heroes, but they're going to create more problems. And we whine about balance, but here's this thing that makes the game balancing so much simpler. So why aren't we embracing it? Compared to tank pairings, there's so few support pairings or DPS pairings that just suddenly break the game. But we know that there are certain tanks, you put them together and it's just like completely dominates the game. So to me, as much as it feels great and it's idealized version, taking it away actually opens up the scope of the game a lot. And overall, I think it will really liberate the community because we're going away from a world where tanks are the be-all and end-all, where tanks define everything about a fight in Overwatch. Because in this world, where tanks are more dps and less about necessarily big shields and protecting everyone all the time, you don't need tanks to do everything for you. You don't need tanks to get you into position every time. You make your own positions, you take your own space. People are worried about all the pressure it's going to put on the one tank, but I think it's the opposite. It's creating a world where you don't rely on tanks to protect you. I mean, they said on the stream that they want to cut down shields and they want to cut down CC. They only want tanks to have CCs because they feel that's role appropriate. 
and they didn't show any Risa gameplay because they were trying to rework her without shields and I can only assume that the same was going for Sigma so when you're not getting stunned and when you're not getting all your damage and abilities blocked by big blue rectangles what you get left with well the game feels more smooth more true to what you're doing like when you actually do something it'll have an impact instead of being interrupted or muted and negated you can take more angles there's more space there's more room for plays to be made and of course this is all in theory but that's all we have like i have play tested 5v5 and these are the kind of observations we came out with but one thing we know for sure is that there will be less mess in the game i've seen some people worry that well i'll get blown up now as the solo tank again i think the opposite is true if you take off tanks for example they contribute way more to damage than they do to protection some people are saying well how will i play ryan now without a zarya bubble well, a Zarya bubble absorbs 200 damage. Do you know how much damage 100 energy Zarya does? 170 DPS. 170 damage per second. So yeah, you miss out on a 200 projected barrier that you can use once every 8 seconds. But for those 8 seconds, you don't have a high charge Zarya beaming you down for like 1000 damage. Overall, there's actually going to be less pressure on you as a solo tank. There's going to be less stuff flying your way. You'll actually have room to do more. And speaking of less mess in the game, it also makes it a better esport. Again, two less players in the field means two less bubbles, two less barriers, two less cooldowns being flung either way, and two less characters to follow around. It'll make the game easier to watch for spectators, and also make it easier to understand for new players who just come into the game. And that really is the key to all this. Like, I don't think everyone is fully grasped, because I've seen a lot of people say, well, I didn't ask for this, and I don't think the Overwatch community wants it. Well, firstly, we don't know that. Who are you asking? Like, Overwatch Twitter, Overwatch Reddit, forums, these are all a very select sample size and a fraction of the player base. But also, if you ask the people who are currently playing, well yeah, they probably are more likely to be happy with the game as is. They probably don't want big changes because they're playing the game right now. If you really want to improve the game and get more people playing, you ask the people who looked at the game and passed or who played the game more importantly, because we had a lot of people play the game and then quit. You want to ask those people, well, why did you quit? Or what can we do to make you come back? I used this metaphor with Flats who I had a lengthy call with about on stream live after this uh, announcement but let's say you have a village and there's not that many people live there and you want to encourage more people to come to this village well you don't ask the people already living in the village how to attract more people they already live there you already got them to come you go to the people who don't live in the village and you say hey what can we do to make you come over what can we do to make you come live with us so when it comes to Overwatch 2, remember that the target audience isn't just us playing the game right now. We're not the only person whose concerns need to be heard. Overwatch 2 is targeting like every person who plays video games. There might be one decision that some of us don't like of the current player base. But again, remember that the scope is so much wider than that. We want the game to thrive, right? We all want the game to improve and have more people playing it and have a thriving community. Well, if making tanks a little bit more DPS-y, if simplifying the game, removing some of the clutter, if all those things make the game better and more appealing, then let's go with it. Like, why aren't we welcoming it? The devs clearly feel that they tried this version, the 6v6 cluttered version, and it didn't do what they wanted it to. So they're taking it in a different direction. Now, of course, we shouldn't be completely ignored in what we say, but we can't sit here and expect Blizzard to only listen to us. They have a much wider concern that they're looking at. Which also brings me to my next point, which is something I've primarily only seen on Overwatch Twitter, is that a lot of people are saying, well, if we go 5v5, well, that's 20 Overwatch League off tanks so are going to lose a job. Now, there's a, a lot to unpack there. It is a bit of a sensitive topic because we are talking about people's livelihoods here. But I do want to encourage us to look beyond just the immediate picture. Of course, on a human level, it sucks. Like, we don't want anyone to lose their job. Like, we love the pros. We want them to thrive. We want them to play as long as they can and get a healthy salary and a health insurance. But Overwatch sold 60 million copies. And we want Overwatch 2 to sell maybe more than that. So you're telling me we should not make a decision that's going to affect 60 million people based on the fact that it might put 20 people out of a job? The devs have to make the decision that's best for Overwatch as a whole. If Overwatch 2 flops, we all lose. And if Overwatch 2 does well, we all win. If Overwatch 2 flops, there will be no Overwatch League eventually. Like, they'll we'll all be out of jobs. If Overwatch 2 flops, hundreds of devs will be out of a job. If Overwatch 2 continues down the trajectory that Overwatch 1 went on, all the content creators will be out of a job and millions of players will have no game to play. So if 5v5 makes the game better and I've already spelled out multiple reasons here why I think it does, then we all win together. If Overwatch is thriving, you might see even more Overwatch League teams get put in or if not Overwatch League teams, you're going to see more people want to invest in the tier 2 scene and then wow, we might actually have a tier 2 scene where someone gets paid. 
more people watching means better salaries for players, sponsorships, tournaments. And like I said, just everybody wins. We can't sit here and be restricted by the job of 20 Overwatch League pros, who I obviously sympathize with on an individual level, but also it's kind of the nature of their job. Like they could just lose their job tomorrow if the patch changes. And we've seen this happen multiple times through the history of Overwatch where a patch happens and a certain role just doesn't get played or a certain style of hero just doesn't get played. Unfortunately, we're not all entitled to have our roles be viable at the highest level. Projectile DPS, shout out. If everyone's heroes were entitled to go pro, we'd still have my man Chipsa in the Overwatch League. Like, where's all the projectile specialists? Where's the Junkrat specialists? Where's the Pharah specialists signed to Overwatch League? There aren't any. That's just the nature of Overwatch and professional sport in general. Like, if your performance is not desired by the team, they could drop you. But we've all adapted before, right? We've adapted, the game has evolved, and we adapt again. So... Why is everyone assuming that all the off tanks will suddenly be out of a job? What's to say that off tanks won't be the meta tanks? Like who's to say Ryan and Winston will be the strongest when Overwatch 2 comes out? If anything, we've seen that when the game gets more DPS-y and deathmatchy, it's the off tanks who win out. So what's to say that it's not all the off tanks and the Zaryas and the Divas and the Roadhogs who are going to thrive come Overwatch 2? If there's anything we've learned from the history of Overwatch, is that Overwatch League teams need a roster of specialists who can fill many roles. It might be that Reinhardt might be the good tank to play as a solo tank in Overwatch 2, or it might be that the meta shifts and now it's Zarya. Like, Overwatch League teams need to facilitate for that, and I'm sure the pros can and will evolve and learn to play around all of that. And I've heard some people say that all these changes might make people feel alienated from their heroes or their role, say, off tank. But we've had huge changes before to heroes, and people still love them. We changed Mercy, the most popular hero in the game, many times over. We changed this huge part of her kit of having this 5-man res and then we gave her a Valkyrie which had also multiple reses and then we took that away as well and even now people love her and even now we have Mercy mains who feel like actually maybe res should go entirely from Mercy's kit because it's unhealthy for the game. So again, if something is good for the game, why wouldn't we do it? We're actually getting everything we've been asking for for the longest time but just in a form that people are surprised by. We said we want tanks to be more fun we don't want a bunch of shields in our face. We don't want to be chain CC'd all the time. And these changes are doing all of those things. The game will feel more dynamic. Tanks will feel more powerful individually, but without having to have this whole team reliance aspect on them. And they're taking away the CCs. They even said that they're considering taking away McCree's flashbang. So what's the problem? Like, this is the world we all wanted. This is what we asked for. And now we're mad. You could argue that it is dumbing down the game, but I think that's a really negative view when we could really have an optimistic view about it. Overwatch is a really complex game, but it's not like the complexity is what makes or breaks the game. There are harder games out there, and again, it's it's not a binary, it's a scale. We're not saying simplify the game till it's Pong and it's just two squares moving as a ball bounces between them, but we can take it from this hyper-complex game and simplify it a little bit to see if more people like it now. Okay, it might not be as complex at the pro level, but it'll be fun and sane and simple for the majority of the player base. And at the pro level, you can always add other stuff to make it complex. <laughs> Hero bands. For most of you watching, 99% of you watching, the game will feel better, I think. I mean, think about it this way. We're five years into the game, and people still don't know to clear high ground as tanks in Master, let alone Gold or Plat or Silver. So are you really going to tell me that we're making the most of the complexity of the game, and like I said, all these tank synergies, like, we, we're absolutely not, guys. Having the tank job be more simple is actually solves the problem that we've been bashing our head against for what feels like years now. Again, without it, it just feels like a world where we're more liberated, where we're not getting tank diffed every game or tank comp diffed every game. And I look forward to that world, even as a tank main myself. I want the game to be better. I want the game to be the best form it can be. So we really should be optimistic about this change. If you're skeptical, you definitely have a right to be, because one thing I will say is that Blizzard did about as bad as job as they could have done delivering this to us. I mean, we always cry for more content, but then two hours into the stream, I was just begging for it to end because it really, really dragged. There was a lot of waffling, a lot of saying the same stuff over and over, a lot of a lot of really mundane and self-indulgent kind of talk. The content creators that they did bring on, they kind of, you could tell they were a bit scared to ask a question that might upset the devs. And also, it, it was a huge disservice to what we saw, I think, to watch basically what looked like gold level players play the game. It's no disrespect to the people who were playing. I mean, they did the best they could, obviously, but we really needed to see the top players play this. We needed to see either, you know, top 500 GM content creators play, or we needed to see owl pros play. We needed to see it be hype, be exciting, really sell us on the idea. But 
I suppose as, as is the Blizzard way, they kind of botched it a little bit. So you're definitely allowed to be skeptical. I think that the substance of the idea is there and the potential is there. Of course, they will balance some of the heroes poorly. Of course, something will come out broken. But that was probably going to happen regardless. Like, they're going to put in new heroes. Something will come out broken anyways. And we'll get through it and we'll come out with a game that's better at the end of it. Again, it was the same when Rolock came in. Stuff was broken and they balanced it. And now everyone's like, yes, thank God for Rolock. Let's never go back. It feels like everyone's looking at this one very narrow way of what we're losing. But there's so many things that we gain from this change that it could honestly make Overwatch 2, even on the PvP side, a way better, a way more desirable, a way more popular game for everyone than Overwatch 1 ever was. And what I'm looking forward to more than anything is that feeling of a fresh, new experience. I mean, I think I see a lot of people saying that they wish Overwatch could go back to that feeling that we had in 2016, 2017, when everything was dynamic and the heroes felt fun and everything felt exciting. Well, this is the closest we'll ever get to that. When we get our hands on this new version of the game, suddenly we're gonna have a whole new world to enter new abilities, new interactions, new play styles, and a game where everyone's learning again for the first time. There'll be metas we never thought of, comps you couldn't make before, play styles you weren't previously allowed to execute because of the way the game was. And that to me, just having that new way of playing the game feels so exciting. And I just ask like, what would you rather have? Would you rather have that, this new world we're all discovering together, where it feels like we're playing the game for the first time and learning and growing as a community? Or do you want the same game with five new heroes? And then back the same bashing heads against the same problems over and over. I know what I would choose. And I look forward to what Blizzard has in store for us because we know this is just the tip of the iceberg. And I'm just excited to see where 5v5 can go. Because I really think we're going to end up with a much better game we have right now. And one that feels awesome and exciting and new. Well, that's all I got for today, guys. Those are my hot takes. I'm entirely sure that there's going to be a lot of you flaming me in the comment section. But do give me your thoughts. I'm genuinely curious what you guys think. I know there's a lot of reactionary takes at this point in time, but remember that we haven't even got our hands to play on it yet. There's so much more iteration that's going to happen. And like I said, there are tangible things that we can get from this that I think will really make the game better. So tell me what you think. Tell me if there's any arguments I missed out or if there's anything that I didn't acknowledge or think of. Because, yeah, we've still got a lot to figure out about this as a community. As always, I'm going to give a big shout out to my patrons who do the awesome job of supporting me. And if you want to support my content directly and if you want to see more videos either here or on my second channel where you can check out my movie and film breakdowns, then please do consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you very much, guys. I will see you soon. I'm sure there's a lot more to talk about here. So I'll see you whether that's on stream or another video. I'll be back before you know it. So peace out, guys.